my third grade. Do you recognize where I am? Here today packing up stuff in our room. It stinks. We should be here learning today. So I thought since I was here, I would bring you our new book, Lulu's Mysterious Mission. So we're gonna start this book today. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we're gonna finish it before school's out. I know we will. So I'm gonna read Lulu's Mysterious Mission. And this classroom is so empty. I wish you were sitting here reading with me, listening to me. We could be using the cue ball or a new microphone, but I guess it's gonna have to do virtually. All right, here we go. Lulu's Mysterious Mission, chapter one. Chapter one, but first, let's go find Lulu, who is in the living room screeching, no, 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 although she doesn't screech much anymore. However, the news she was hearing from her mom and her dad was so utterly, totally shocking that it not only started her screeching, but almost shocked her into throwing one of her heel-kicking, arm-waving, on-the-floor tantrums. Lulu, however, thinks of herself, look at her, oh, not a happy camper, thinks of herself as too grown up now to throw tantrums, which also means she thinks of herself as grown up enough to go with her mom and her dad on the trip they just told her that they would be taking without her. When Lulu had finished screeching, she fiercely glared at her mom and her dad and asked them in a not too nice voice these questions. How can you have a good time if I'm not there? And who's going to take care of me? And how can you be positive that this person won't kidnap me and hold me for ransom? Do you know what ransom is? That's where you, um, like barter. They'll give, they give you something if you give them money. So uh, I'll give Lulu back if you pay me a thousand dollars. That would be ransom. And, or maybe she'll stop feeding me and start yelling at me and hitting me and locking me down in the basement with the rats. Okay, that isn't technically a question. When Lulu was done, her mom and her dad looked at each other, then answered very carefully. For even though their daughter wasn't the serious pain in the butt that she used to be, she wasn't the easiest girl in the world to be parents to when she didn't get her way. First of all, said Lulu's dad, there are no rats in our basement. As a matter of fact, we don't have a basement. But even if we did, said Lulu's mom, we'd never hire a sitter who'd locked you, lock you up in it or starve you or hit you or yell at you or kidnap you or, added Lulu's dad, hold you for ransom. And if you were held for ransom, Lulu's mom assured Lulu, patting her oh so lovingly on the cheek, we'd pay whatever it took to get you back. But Lulu pointed out, removing her mom's patting hand from her cheek, if instead of paying the ransom, you'd let me come with you, this trip of yours would cost a lot less money. Lulu's dad explained that as much as they loved and adored their precious only child, they wanted to have, for the first time since they'd been parents, a private, grown-ups only vacation together. And that even though they would be having the kind of fun, and even though they wouldn't be having the kind of fun they had with their fabulous Lulu, they would be having a different kind of fun. You mean better fun, grumped Lulu. You'll have better fun without me and you won't even care when I get sick and die. Chapter two, let's keep going. Lulu's mom started crying at the thought of poor little Lulu left behind and dead of a broken heart. Maybe she sniffled to Lulu's dad. Maybe we ought to stay home or take her with us. Maybe we are being too unkind. It's at this point in every argument that Lulu almost always gets her way because her mom and her dad just can't bear it when their darling is displeased. It's right at this point that Lulu almost always gets what she wants because her mom and her dad give up and give in. Except on those rare occasions like now, for instance, when they try not to make a prediction. Are they gonna give in to her? Are they gonna give her what she wants? Let's find out. <clears throat> Lulu's dad cleared his throat and in a strong, firm voice replied to Lulu's mom. No, he said, we're going, she's staying. That's what we decided. And he took a deep breath. We're sticking to it. He then turned to Lulu and said, but you don't have a thing to worry about, dearest darling, because after much research, we've hired the best babysitter in town, maybe the world, to take care of you the week that we're away. Check out this picture. So you can tell just by the picture, look at how mom feels. 
right now, give me a character trait, pretend I can hear you, of how you would describe how mom is feeling. Give it, good. Give me a character trait, how you think dad is feeling. Can you see dad? And right now, there's Lulu. Character trait, how she's feeling. Okay, let's keep going. Babysitter, Lulu gasped. Babysitter? Babysitters sit babies, and I'm not a baby. Lulu thinks she's no baby because she plays a tough game of Scrabble, goes by herself to the corner store to buy milk, gets good reports from her teachers, earns some money walking dogs, rides a bike with no hands, and has pierced ears. She's also on the softball team, the swim team, and the debate team, has recently started learning the trombone, and is going to be, cross, going to be a crossing guard next year. And what Lulu wants to know is why a person who can do all that would need a person called a babysitter. Call her what you want, but her name, Lulu's mom said soothingly, is Miss Sonia. Sophia Solinsky, a trained professional. And we're sure, dear, that if you, dear, will give her, dear, a chance, dear, the two of you will get along just fine. In fact, said Lulu's dad, she's moving in this afternoon. We'll show her around the house and maybe you two can start to bond before your mom and I leave tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? They're leaving tomorrow morning? How come Lulu is only being told that her mom and dad are leaving tomorrow morning? How come she wasn't told earlier? How come she wasn't given time to prepare? As the person who's writing the story, I take full responsibility for this decision because anyone who knows Lulu, like I know Lulu, wouldn't want to give her time to prepare. I'm going to my room, said Lulu to her mom and her dad, and maybe I'll come down and maybe I won't. But while I'm up there, she added as loudly, trumply, as she loudly tromped up the stairs, I'm planning to be very, very unhappy. So there's Lulu. Now take a look at Lulu's face. What kind of character trait could we use to describe her right now? We know angry, upset. Frustrated might be something you said. Annoyed. Okay. Chapter three, I'm gonna keep going. Since we're in our classroom, we'll probably keep going if you're here, so I'll keep going. Up in her room, along with being very, very unhappy, Lulu was trying to figure out what to do. Actually, she knew what to do. Get rid of the babysitter. So her mom and her dad would have no one to leave her with. All she needed to figure out was how. She went to her computer. Yes, she has her own computer. She has her own everything and typed in how to get rid of a babysitter, but nothing too helpful came up. So Lulu started making a list of possibilities. As she wrote, she chanted this little chant. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, the babysitter's got to go. While Lulu was chanting and making her list, the doorbell rang and a voice boomed through the house. A voice that sounded to Lulu like real bad news. Sonia? Sophia Solinsky, it said, at your service. Lulu heard the gentle murmurs of her mom and her dad interspersed with Miss Solinsky's boom and the quiet patter of their feet. With Miss Solinsky's clomp and then someone, either her mom or her dad, was knocking softly at the bedroom with Miss Selinsky bellowing, that eagle has landed. Lulu, open up. The eagle has landed? That's how Miss Selinsky says hello? Lulu, thinking fast, took off her shoes, jumped into bed, and huddled pitifully underneath her comforter, hoping to make all three of them believe that she had suddenly been struck down with some dreadful disease. And so when she heard her mom calling, come out, my darling, and meet Miss Selinsky, she said, I think that I just got real sick. Probably not, said Lulu's dad. You looked perfectly fine to me only an hour ago. But I'm not fine now, Lulu replied. I think I'm very sick. And anyway, I'm definitely contagious. Not a problem, Miss Selinsky, boomingly replied. I never catch anything. She then, the nerve, turned the doorknob and opened Lulu's bedroom door and marched herself straight over to Lulu's bed. Oh, you can look at her face. I don't think that's what Lulu expected to happen. <gasps> that brings us to chapter four. So the answer I want you, the question I want you to answer in our comments today, we ended chapter three with 
Miss Selinski barging into Lulu's room, opening the door. What do you think is what's going to happen next? Make a prediction. What's Miss Selinski going to do? What are her parents going to do? What's Lulu going to do? Make a prediction in the comments. And tomorrow, chapter four of Lulu's Mysterious Mission. Miss you guys. Wish you were here in room 109 with me. Maybe we'll do another read aloud from this room. All right. See you guys.